So again, we do thank the Lord Jesus for all his goodness and his mercy. And we'll say as we said last night to Chicago, this is the time that the Lord has given you to get right with him. Don't let this moment pass you by. Put on your seatbelts because the word of God is going to come to you. And this is what the Lord has given us that we might be saved. All of us are striving simply to make the first resurrection, to be with the Lord in peace when he comes. We can live this life and gain so much in this life, but what about our souls? We can gain many things, but what about our souls? Because God has power over our souls. Money won't help you when you die. Friends and family won't help you when you die. As Peter said, save yourself. So this is the opportunity that the Lord has given you to save yourself from the judgment that's coming on this world. So now at this time, it is my pleasure to present to you in the city of Chicago, Illinois, our leader, teacher, and guide, the apostle, Pastor Gino Jennings. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Well, thank you. You may be seated, brothers and sisters. We greet all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus, the one God. We thank you for him, for his divine wisdom and his perfect understanding of all things. We thank him for his mercy and the provisions that God alone have made for us. I'm grateful to God for you that came out this morning and be here. And remember, we'll be back again at 5 o'clock this evening. Next week, or, later, or rather this weekend coming, we'll be in Detroit. <clears throat> and I do hope that if some of you are not too busy, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I think Detroit is a reason to be close to you. Stop over, hang out with us while we spar with Detroit. And uh, bring them what they so badly need also. 48 went down last night in the name of Jesus Christ. Which was a blessing God knows. And some have said to me they want to be baptized today. I'm grateful for God's mercy. And I'm grateful for you that have a desire to really walk with God in a day like today. We're living in a time now that the scripture says men will not endure sound doctrine. When something is sound, it's strong. It's very potent. It may hurt you. And believe me, if you hang around this long enough, something about you going to get hurt. I'm hurting now, even if I don't look like it. <laughs> Anyone that have a desire to do this right, that book is going to flick some pain on you. And when I'm coming up, I used to wonder why I see these so-called Christians walking the streets, giving out flyers with this big sunshine grin on their face. And, and they always, look, you know, they make it appear like Jesus and they service to Jesus. There's no pain, no suffering, no nothing. When I began to get knowledge, it made me know they're not doing this thing right. Bible says they that will live godly shall suffer persecution. And I'm a living witness. The amount of uh, death contracts that's on my head right here in America. And 99.9 .9 of all the contracts came from so-called Christians. The ones that claim they love Jesus. And if you read the Bible, the ones that wanted to put Jesus to death were religious people. And the ones that I get my greatest fight from is from them that claim they are religious. Because there's something in God's message that then sparked that devil in them one thing about the devil he don't want you to bother him why you think the devil fights you when you got in mind to get right have you noticed when you out there acting like a fool the devil don't bother you the devil boosts you along pat you on the back and carry you along you and the devil are very good associates only when you begin to disassociate yourself from him, things start happening to you that never happened. That's right. People turn on you that you wouldn't think will turn on you. 
people start to act all type of strange ways and it's only because you want to do right. When you want to go to hell, people befriend you. When you want to obey God, man, people turn on you good. And some of those people will be your family. Amen. Your mother, father, sister, brother, relatives. And some of them will say they're Christians. Well, you cannot represent Christ on your own terms. One must represent Christ according to his teaching. And what Christ taught and what men teach is not the same. All right, let's go to work in the book. See how many bruises we can put on you. <laughs> we thank God for this message. In fact, I, I, I totally forgot that we were live uh, last night. We was live. Folks all around the world saw this message. We, we went live stream and I, I totally forgot. But uh, you can see people are logged on from Belgium, from Honolulu, from... Uh, the UK and folks have been part of the church in India and other areas that logged on and thank God for this message and people, uh, uh, in fact, one of my ministers out of California, uh, he said, are you still in California? Are you still in Chicago? He said, because I know some people want to be baptized. And yes, I'm still in Chicago and God be our helper. We're trying to, uh, Make arrangements now where we can, because uh, I, I kind of don't like the way they had you standing out there waiting and whatnot. And I was hoping that uh, the center will just let the people come on in and be seated. So we're trying to find a, um, a community center in the south side of Chicago. Because what I want to do is utilize that temporarily for church where we can start getting the people together. And I'm trying to set this up as early as have it done by next month. Amen. This is what I'm working on. Amen. Because like I said, we're looking to start a church here in Chicago. And even though I travel all around the world, I want to get Chicago up and running. So uh, you pray for me. You pray for me. I'm trying to get this done and uh, by next month God be our helper at least we'll have a temporary place where we can spar with the devil and at the same time we're working on, working on uh, getting our inspectors in this church that we told you about uh, that strange name Street uh, Washington. <laughs> that's a strange name brother but I do hope that you get a chance to um, go by and Look at the church. I believe the address is 6416 or 6516, if I'm not mistaken. But it's right on the corner. It was a Lutheran church. I can hold a lot of, I can fight a lot of devils in that place. Because Chicago, the devil, not only within the city of Chicago, but abroad, he's really trying to destroy our young people. And our young people are giving their lives over to Satan, Satan willingly. They are killing each other. They are destroying each other. And they are murdering each other with a smile on their face. And in order, and, and like I said, I commend the various community uh, leaders and men and women who have went out in the community trying to uh, stop the killing or stop the violence but I'm telling you no man can stop it no activist can stop it the only one that can stop man madness is his creator because man was made for God's glory and no man or woman will stop the madness until they submit to God. We can demonstrate and have marches and carry signs, hold hands and sing, we shall overcome. God help you if you're still singing that in the 21st century. 
we shall overcome. Well, it sounds good, but there's not a human on this planet that will overcome trying to do this on their own. Bible says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that buildeth. So men is trying to stop something that no man started. You're trying to stop something that Satan started. And if Satan started, it takes God to end it. For man don't have what it take to fight Satan and win. Sometimes men start out good. But when the smoke clear, who hands he end up in? Satan. He start out good. And you look at some brothers, you know. They start out good, coming to church, whatnot. Man, you know, I'm, I'm going to get my life right and before you know it. One of his old satanic friends pop up. And his friend he allowed to have more influence on him than God. Because whenever we have in mind to do right. Satan still know there's something in us that still crave to do wrong. And you can get more to encourage you to do wrong yes, sir. than to do right. Yeah. You got to fight to do right. Amen. But people will pat you on the back to do wrong. Yes. So when you got in mind to do right, I'm telling you, prepare yourself for war. Oh, yes. You got to fight with the way you think. You're going to have to fight with the way you feel. You're going to have to fight with family members who don't understand the ways of God right away. People will see you drinking, smoking, gambling, party. And most of them won't tell you you're destroying yourself. But they see you want to live holy. You know what they say? You're in a cult. <laughs> right away, you're in a cult. Drink, smoke, gamble, party, do whatever you want. For your self-destruction, hardly nobody criticizes you. Parents sometimes won't even show no interest. They are stand by why you kill yourself. That's true. But the moment you got in mind to obey God, them that was quiet when you was a sinner, now they got a lot of mouth that try to keep you from doing what is right for your soul. 